Your life story is uh, almost a, a mixture between Biggins and James <laughs> Bond. It's almost <laughs> like a novel, but in your case, of course, it's all real. You've got many records uh, behind you. Number of, uh, I think, deck landing was your speciality. That's right. With uh, what over. 2,400? And seven. Yeah. And seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, the variety of aircraft you've uh, used over the, your flying career, again, is just an incredible range, about 487. Yeah, these are only types that uh, you flew in command, mm -hmm. not as second pilot. Right. There were some rules we had to make on this. And the other thing was you could only count the basic type, not different marks on models of the type. For example, right. I flew 14 marks of Spitfire, right. but you're only allowed to count that as ones. And of course, some of these variations can be quite profound. Oh, so yes, there yes. Uh, there were many, many marks of Spitfire. Many. And I suppose, in a sense, because the way the industry's gone, there are fewer types of aircraft now? Oh, very much so, yes, yeah. very much so. So there's no it's unlikely that somebody else could have a similar experience like that. It's g going to be very difficult. I doubt many people say it can't be broken, but the, the one can never say that. But um, it's going to be very difficult. Okay, if we just talk initially about Yuri Gagarin. Now, uh, he came to England um, and he was in, the, um, in London on the, I think you met him on the 14th of July. Mm -hmm. um, where were you when uh, you met him? I was in the Ministry of Defence, but it was called the Admiralty in those days. Mm. It hadn't uh, it changed to the Ministry of Defence while I was there. <laughs> and uh, I was the Deputy Director of Naval Air Warfare. Mm. And I, of course, had been Chief Test Pilot at Farnborough. Mm -hmm. And uh, since Gagarin had a test flying background, uh, the, we had proposed to meet myself, and the Russians had agreed to this very much. Oh. And um, it was arranged quite in a quite intimate way. There were only about three of us in the room with him and his, I called him his commissar, <laughs> who was really his interpreter, and guide dog, I think. All oh, right. Uh -huh. But um, I was very suspicious of whether a Russian interpreter would really give us back uh -huh. what Gagarin said in his replies. So uh, amongst the three of us, I had an, a naval Russian interpreter. Ah, uh, see. I said to him, now don't tell them you're an interpreter. It might inhibit them. Mm -hmm. But just nod if I, I'm getting the real answers back right. and not some cooked up answers uh -huh. from the commissar. Uh -huh. And uh, it was very, w w I think he and the commissar instinctively felt there was something like this going on because mm -hmm. he never, I have to say, he never gravitated away from the answers right. that Gagarin gave, to the best of our knowledge, anyway. Right. And um, Gagarin was in civilian clothes, he was not in uniform, mm. and um, my first impressions of him were he was a very simple citizen. Uh, I thought he is the type that would have been a Russian farmer <laughs> or something of the sort. He was certainly very unsophisticated. Oh. And he was stockily built, mm -hmm. and uh, quite like me, quite um, small, mm -hmm. and uh, except he was a bigger, stockier build, and um, altogether, I found him a rather delightful person, actually. Oh. Yes. What, what sort of things did you? Use? Uh, well, exchange in your we had worked it out. We were given twenty minutes to talk to him. Uh -huh. So we worked out, by the time we talked, got the interpretation back and whatnot, mm -hmm. we would have time for nine or ten questions. Uh -huh. And we 
pre-prepared the questions and um, I've, I kept a record of them then and I have the record with me now. Oh. It's not the original because the original has got weary with time, uh -huh. but I've been able to interpret it all right. Uh -huh. So I know exactly what I asked him and what exactly he replied. Oh, really? And um, so I'll use these if I may. Oh. Um, would you like me to ask, tell you what I asked him? And yes. Right. yes. Well, here, are the, here is the list, but I'll tell you, the first one I asked him was what was his main impression during this flight? Uh -huh. And he said it was the beauty of the universe, and in particular that of our, he said, our world. Um, as he saw it from the spaceship. Mm -hmm. So then I carried on and said, well now, what were your main sensations during this flight? And he said, well, it was one initially of tremendous noise mm -hmm. and acceleration on the liftoff. Uh -huh. And he said, this was all very shattering, but suddenly it all went, went, as we went into orbit, it changed to quite serene peace. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, peace and quiet in orbit, and also with a little sensation of speed. He said, I just felt I was sitting there drifting round. Right. Um, except he, re he said, you realize you were going fast, but by fact that the earth and etc were mm -hmm. moving away from you. Mm -hmm. Then I got down to the piloting side uh -huh. and I said, were you concerned for your safety? And he said, no, because he said, a test pilot knows how to cope with fear. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I must confess that I felt a little trepidation about the re-entry mm -hmm. and the landing. He said, I wasn't frightened, but I, I was concerned. I knew things, if anything would go wrong, it would go wrong in that phase. And um, I said, well, had you much to do on the flight? And he said, no. He said, not compared to a standard aircraft test pilot. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I was a, a passenger for much of the time. Mm. And um, I said to him, would you sooner be an astronaut on an aircraft test pilot? Uh. I didn't think I'd get the right answer from the Commissar, but apparently I did, because Yuri said, I'd by far sooner be a test pilot because he said, then I feel I have greater control over my fate. Mm. That's a very common uh, statement from all of the uh, uh, Yes, and yes, laws. but this, remember this was the first guy to yeah. do it. <laughs> yes. And uh, the, maybe the others are copying what, what he said. said, you never <laughs> know, but this was his enemy. <laughs> And I said, all right, would you like to return to a test flight? Mm -hmm. And he said, I sincerely hope I'll be allowed to do so. Mm -hmm. Again, I was wondering if the Commissar would allow him to say that, but apparently he, mm -hmm. he did. And then, again, I returned a bit to a sensation. I asked him, what sight? during his f flight on our, what site on our planet, on the Earth, impressed him most? Was it thing like the Great Wall of China or the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. something like this, which are very obvious from outer space? And he said, no, it was neither of these. What impressed, impressed me was the huge size of Mother Russia. <laughs> you apparently right. hadn't appreciated it was quite as large as it appeared on from space. 
And it's interesting because you can't always tell where the boundaries are and therefore exactly. how he knew how big it was. Exactly. I think he may have been briefed into mm. this. You never know. Yeah. Uh, but that's wh what he actually said. And um, I said, then we continued on. I, I said, did you have any problem with either re-entry or the bailout? And he said, um, the bailout and the landing procedure. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I didn't. But um, he said, the heat on re-entry uh -huh. uh, didn't frighten me, but it, um, I was very conscious of it, <laughs> very conscious of it. Mm -hmm. And he said, I was very grateful. Uh, after, you see, they had to come down so far and then bail out of there the spacecraft, uh -huh. and land by parachute. Did he actually say that to you? That yes. Did he did bail out? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, because everywhere else he went, he...